coming up next on KPBS Evening Edition. An investigative report says San Diegans' water bills have doubled while the utility is flush with cash. And if you're looking to buy a house, the county tax man may have a deal for you. But buyer beware. Evening Edition starts now. Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Joanne Ferrian. I'm Dwayne Brown. Gas prices have shot up over the past few days and could go even higher because of a fire at an oil refinery in Washington state. Today, the average price of regular gas was $4.07 a gallon. That's the highest it's been since last May. Gas prices typically rise through the spring, and some analysts say the price could reach $5 a gallon this year. A consumer group says we could be paying several hundred dollars more a year for electricity if San Diego Gas and Electric gets its way. The Utility Consumers Action Network, or UCAN, says SDG&E wants to retroactively impose a rate increase on customers to cover the cost of the 2007 wildfires. The Southern California wildfires in late October 2007 destroyed about 1,300 homes in San Diego County. It was fueled by strong Santa Ana winds, persistent drought, and numerous other sources, including downed power lines. State investigators determined San Diego Gas and Electric was responsible for several fires, including the Witch Creek, the second largest in state history. Now, UCAN attorney David Peffer says customers may be on the hook to pay the $463 million liability cost. Well, for the average rate payer, it means higher bills. He says based on the cost per meter, it works out to about $356 more a year for an average customer. It's because the total cost of the wildfires is yet to be determined. And if there are future wildfires and this passes, this could mean literally unlimited liability absorbed by ratepayers. San Diego Gas and Electric says UCAN doesn't have the facts straight. It issued this statement today. SDG&E is not asking to recover 2007 wildfire costs in this proceeding. Rather, we're simply seeking the opportunity to treat 2007 wildfire costs like the costs from any future wildfires and to have the ability to seek rate recovery of such costs through a future application. Pfeffer says SDG&E is trying to appease its shareholders at the expense of its customers. The problem is from their cost-benefit analysis, it's too expensive to clear the brush and fortify the power lines. It's not profitable, but it is possible. And their incentives would change if the shareholders had to bear the impact of, of this insurance cost. There's a meeting on Thursday at the California Public Utilities Commission. UCAN plans to make its case then. SDG&E says any rate increase will be discussed publicly so customers can hear the facts. An investigation by our media partner, Investigative News Source, found that while water rates for City of San Diego customers have been steadily increasing for the past five years, the utility sits on a huge surplus of cash. According to News Source, from July 2005 to July 2010, San Diego raised residential water rates between 16 and 22 percent a year. That means some bills have more than doubled. Kelly Thornton, the reporter who wrote this story, joins me now. Kelly, why? Why have water bills increased so much in the past five years? Well, the cost of water is going up and up and up, and they need to spend a lot of money to improve the infrastructure. They have a lot of water main breaks and spills every year. Now, your report actually found on average there are 100 water main breaks a year. So has infrastructure actually been repaired with this rate hike? Well, some of it has. They've had of about 111 projects they intended to do as part of this rate increase. They completed about 39. Your report also found that there is money, millions of dollars, sitting in an account. Tell me more about that. Well, combined, it's about a total of $630 million that is in an account that has not yet been spent. The city says that most of it is earmarked for projects, but I think the oversight committees are concerned that the money is just sitting unspent and um, people are paying interest on it and it's not um, being spent. So why not? Why, why has this money not been, been spent on, on fixing infrastructure when that's why uh, people are paying more for water? Well, the city says that they've had construction delays and they had uh, trouble getting into the bond market due to the city's financial condition in the um, mid to late 2000s. 
So uh, people at home might be wondering, does this mean they might get a refund or their rates might be get rolled back because of this surplus? Well, the city still needs a lot of infrastructure improvement because they have pipes that are between 50 and 100 years old. So they definitely need to improve the infrastructure. So I don't know that there'll be a rate rollback, but that's certainly on the mind of some of the people who oversee the rate funds. That this, There's a committee that was appointed by the mayor to look at that, and so they are raising these issues. Investigative news source reporter Kelly Thornton. Now, the head of the city's water department will be at the roundtable in just a few moments, and you can read Kelly's entire report at kpbs.org. Tijuana police have arrested a man accused of killing his wife in San Diego. Armando Perez has been a fugitive since October 2010. That's when the body of 19-year-old Diana Gonzalez was found in a bathroom at San Diego City College. KPBS reporter Katie Orr joins us from the News Center with reaction from the county district attorney. Katie, remind us how Bonnie Dumanis was involved in this case. Dwayne, she was criticized for not filing charges against Perez for an earlier incident in which he allegedly kidnapped and assaulted Gonzalez for several days. Dumanis says there was not enough evidence to charge him in that case, but critics have said if Perez was charged, he might not have been in a position to allegedly murder Gonzalez. Still, Dumanis says her office acted appropriately in this case. In this case, we have uh, diligently pursued uh, Mr. Perez uh, since the murder, and I am uh, happy that he has been um, arrested in Mexico. We have been following him for some time, and uh, we will hold him accountable. Perez will now be transferred to Mexico City for an extradition hearing before being returned to the United States. Now, Demana said uh, her office acted appropriately, but have they made any changes since this case? She told me that there have been some changes. She says after the Gonzalez case, her office created a high-risk team that will look at cases like this and try to come up with different ways to handle them or give them extra resources if need be. KPBS Metro reporter Katie Orr. The city of San Diego responds to an investigation into increasing water bills. Joanne is talking about that at the Evening Edition Roundtable. As we told you a moment ago, City of San Diego water bills have doubled in the past five years. The increase has generated millions of dollars in cash reserves, money that is supposed to be used to fix aging infrastructure. Joining me is Roger Bailey, Director of Public Utilities, City of San Diego. Thank you for being here, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. appreciate it. So uh, the big question, really, why is it taking so long or this long to fix water pipes that people have been paying for? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, back in 07, we made the case to have the rate adjustment, and we said we were going to replace pipelines, and we said we were going to build and upgrade our water treatment plants. I think that it's important that the public understand that the three water treatment plants that we said we were going to upgrade, we have completed those. Those are the major projects in the CIP, or the Capital Improvement Program. In addition to that, we said that we were going to replace pipelines. We said we were going to replace 75 miles of pipeline, and today we have either awarded or uh, completed 100 miles of those pipelines. In fact, we have completed construction of about 58 uh, miles of pipeline of the amount that we talked about. So I think that it's important that the public understand that we have executed and we are continuing to do that. We never said that the projects were going to be completed by fiscal year 11. Well, I do believe that the report goes on to say that out of the 111 projects that were supposed to be completed, in 2011, about a third have been completed, 20-something of them that have been canceled or on hold, but still quite a number that haven't been completed, yet this money is in an account. Yeah, I think that it's um, easy to itemize the list of projects and figure out which one have been completed and by that measure say that we are behind. But if you look at it in, in a different way, if you look at the most expensive part of the program and you ask yourself, have we executed or have we completed most of those projects? And the answer would be yes. So, you know, there are several ways of looking at this thing. If you go down the list of projects and all projects are not made equally, but if you go down the list of projects, that's one measure. But if you look at the total amount of pipes that we said we were going to construct, we have completed most of those and we have completed our water 
water treatment plants that we talked about um, just a few moments ago. So the, the second part of the story is the money, obviously, where I've had emails in the past several months from people who say, look at my water bill and how much it's increased, and they want to know why. When they hear that there are hundreds of millions of dollars in an account, and I realize that the city is required to have money in a reserve account, but but more than it's required to is sitting in this in account. We know that at least $155 million more, yet their bill continues to go up. They want to know why they keep paying if, in fact, there is this reserve cash. Yeah, a few things here. Um, I would say that I totally understand and appreciate the frustration. And yes, we have had rate increases over the last several years, but I think it's important that the public understands that, number one, last year we had um, an opportunity to absorb the pass-through that we actually incurred because of the CWA and MWD. So pass-through, the, MW, cost, pass the through increased through cost of is water. The increase of raw water cost that is passed on to us and we actually absorb that without actually uh, requesting a rate adjustment. So it but didn't go up yet again? It did not. Okay. But the second part of this discussion is that we need to understand that we don't have $630 million sitting in the bank just doing nothing with. That's not a correct statement. Uh, we have a long list of obligations that we have to um, fulfill, including keeping a, keeping a certain amount of um, reserve, which is an expense. We have no choice. We have to keep that. In addition to that, I think what they, um, the numbers do not reflect is the fact that of that $630 million that they talk about, we have awarded uh, at least encumbered over $178 million in obligations, meaning that we have outstanding contracts that we have to complete. And so it's not like the money has no use, and we need to be very careful in saying that we have $630 million in cash because we don't. We reported earlier, uh, a couple weeks ago, that water rates may go up yet again, that the city was sort of looking at this. Is that going to be the case, or given this information, could people expect a rollback on their water rate? You know, I, I think it's premature to talk about rate increases. I think what we are doing and what the public should understand is that we are in the process of assessing our costs to make sure that the costs that we incur, we are able to cover those costs. And by that, we are doing a cost of service study to make sure that the structure is in place to recover our um, revenue requirement. And I don't want to prejudge it one way or the other. I suspect that at the end of the day, we'll make a recommendation to council. Okay, Roger Bailey, thank you for being here. Thank you. Dozens of county properties are about to go on the auction block. The locations range from the mountains to the coast, and opening bids are set way below market value. That story in just a moment. This is KPBS Evening Edition. Tonight on KPBS at 8, Antiques Roadshow is in Steel City, Pittsburgh, PA, for a look at delicate examples of centuries-old jewelry fashioned out of steel and iron. Then at 9, somewhere between sordid scandal and grand achievement, a chronicle of the presidency of William Jefferson Clinton, part one on American experience. And at 11, revisit some amazing appraisals on an encore presentation of the Antiques Roadshow in Pittsburgh. That's tonight on KPBS. Tuesday at 10 on KPBS. KPBS Evening Edition is made possible by Joan and Irwin Jacobs and by A state lawmaker from San Diego has co-authored legislation requiring more transparency in political advertising. The California Disclosure Act would apply to ballot measures or candidates. The ads would have to disclose the top three fundraisers of $10,000 or more. Republican Assemblyman Nathan Fletcher teamed with the Democrat to write the bill. He says folks have a right to know who's funding political campaigns. 
Our next segment comes with a warning, buyer beware. Joanne is at the roundtable with the county tax collector to explain. One property owner's loss may be another's gain this week as more than 100 properties in San Diego County go up for auction. Joining me to talk about why these owners are losing their properties is Dan McAllister, San Diego County Treasurer and Tax Collector. Thanks for coming back to the show. My pleasure. So tell us, why are these owners going to lose their homes this, this week? These owners who may be in jeopardy of losing their homes through this auction are owners that have not lived up to their responsibilities, their legal responsibilities to pay property taxes and these owners have not paid their taxes in five years or more. Okay, so, so that's how you get on this list. It is not as if somebody is just forcing people out of their homes because they missed a payment. They have missed five years worth of payments plus interest plus penalties and they have refused to step up and even engage us in conversation about setting up a time payment plan where they could in effect pay those taxes over a longer period of time. Well, well tell us about these properties then. I mean are they, are they single family homes? Are they investment properties, rentals? Most are not. Uh, the, the, the salacious uh, uh, pictures and the good pictures of some of these wonderful places for sale are kind of unusual and by auction time uh, that is Friday morning, many times they're redeemed the night before, by 5 o'clock the night before. There's a legal obligation on our part to give people a final notice that says, you have the right to redeem your property if you bring in the money up to 5 o'clock the night before the auction. Most of the time that happens. However, we can't be sure and we have to notify the public that these auctions are taking place. And every once in a while, we end up with properties like you see on the pictures here. Yeah, so we just showed people at home some fairly nice properties that yes. look below market. I also yes. went through this list. Some of these opening bids, say $1,500, $2,500. I mean, is this really what happens at auction? Do you get some amazing bargain? In several cases, yes. In most cases, no. Um, there's a reason uh, in some of the smaller amounts that people have not paid their property taxes. And let's go through a couple of those. One might be an example where Uncle Harry passed away. He willed the property in northeast San Diego County in a very isolated rural area, maybe covered with chaparral and brush, no ingress, no egress. He couldn't even see the property unless he was on top of Mount Woodson with a telescope. And the reality strikes home because he sees granite boulders with graffiti on them. We've all seen that in North County, mm -hmm. uh, in Northeast County areas. Uh, and he realizes that, why should I pay taxes on this property I'll never be able to use? Mm -hmm. So he walks away from it. It doesn't hurt because he may have a little ding on his credit, uh, but the reality is he doesn't file for bankruptcy, he hasn't done things that would really hurt his credit for a long period of time. They walk away from property like that. There are other situations where uh, a developer had a, a wonderful idea 10 or 15 years ago about subdividing parts of the desert in Borrego Springs uh, for a subdivision with dreams that people would rush out to the desert to build their dream vacation home. and they walked away or the bank pulled the funding or the bank went under or the people went under uh, all kinds of reasons and some of those properties uh, uh, really the best we can do sometimes are satellite shots that look like moon shots uh, literally because they've subdivided rock and sand but you do have um, some that are actually owner occupied this year don't you like we, people we probably, who live in their we homes we do we do we have 15 out of uh, i believe it's 31 remaining properties to auction off that are currently owner occupied in those cases this is um, uh, up to the buyer the successful bidder uh, to take care uh, by legal means to uh, put the people out of those houses once they take possession of the ownership documents. Uh, that is not our responsibility at all. So just so people understand, if they, mm -hmm. they bid successfully on one of these homes, they pay and someone's living in it, they just lost it, it's up to them to have them evicted. They'll probably have to make arrangements legally uh, to do the proper notifications and service and things of that sort to let people know that they're no longer able to stay in those houses. Uh, but again, these are people that have not lived up to their responsibilities for five years, thus depriving the rest of the taxpayers who have paid on time uh, the right to have full compensation. We estimate that if we redeem all of the properties left in the auction, uh, we will bring back over $2.1 million 
in back taxes and penalties. This is money that governments readily need right now. School districts could use this money. 42 public school districts uh, derive 42 percent of all of the tax dollars we collect. It's important that those monies be returned to the people. And uh, what website can people go to to find out more information about this? That's a great question, and it's www.sdtreastax.com. Dan McAllister, thanks for being here. My pleasure indeed, and thanks for all you do. The leading cause of accidental death in San Diego isn't car crashes or firearms, it's prescription drugs. Over the last decade, prescription drug-related deaths have increased by 85%. KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg tells us the vast majority are caused by overdosing on painkillers. Everyone in San Diego who suffers an accidental or non-natural death is brought to the county medical examiner's office in Kearney Mesa. Each body spends some time in cold storage before it's wheeled into another room for an autopsy. Deputy medical examiner Jonathan Lucas makes his living figuring out the causes of a person's death. He says recently, more and more San Diegans have been killed by an overdose of prescription drugs. The biggest issue uh, within the prescription drug problem are, are really the narcotics, the opiates, the pain medications, uh, the morphine derivatives, the opiate derivatives. In San Diego County last year, five widely prescribed drugs, methadone, oxycodone, valium, hydrocodone, and morphine, killed 222 people. That's more than died by alcohol and heroin combined. Most of the deaths that we see are people in the age range of about 40 to about 60. And these are the people that generally have problems like chronic pain. Um, and they have a legitimate reason to have these medications, but they may mix or borrow uh, other or overtake their medications uh, more than prescribed. In another part of the medical examiner's building, all of the medications seized at death scenes are stored. Chief Medical Examiner Glenn Wagner says he's noticed a big rise in the quantity of different drugs people are taking. This shopping bag represents one individual and the number of drugs that that person had on board. There are 19 separate lines on this one, and it goes for several pages. Special Agent Tom Lennox keeps a watchful eye on prescription drugs in San Diego. He says people don't seem to have trouble getting narcotics. The prescriptions are being written. They're getting out into the community, so they could be getting them from um, their own home. They could be getting them from friends' homes, where they're going in um, and stealing them from their friends' homes. Lennox says in 2008, one of the most popular drugs on the street was the painkiller OxyContin in 80 milligram pills. Lennox decided to track how many of these pills were being distributed to San Diego pharmacies. We found that there was approximately 675,000 in 2007. When I looked at 2008, it jumped to almost 1.1 million, almost an additional 500,000 pills. Clearly, a lot of these drugs are being prescribed. They're also being sold illegally on the street. And law enforcement officials say there's been a big increase in burglaries and robberies at local pharmacies. The pain, the pain still there. But physicians are the major source of these drugs. Dr. Robert Wales is a pain specialist in Encinitas. He prescribes narcotics to his patients all the time. They provide tremendous assistance for those people in chronic pain. So used correctly, they're wonderful. So. It's hard to put a judgment call on the narcotic themselves. It's how they're utilized and the people that use them. Dr. Wales concedes there are people who get the drugs legitimately and then sell them to others. We actually look for that routinely. We actually routinely check urine samples to see if they have the medicine that we're prescribing in their urine. If they don't have that medicine in their urine, then we have to suspect that it's going somewhere else. Dr. Wales says in general, physicians need better training on how to prescribe drugs for chronic pain. But he believes the issue is much bigger than that. I think what we need to understand as a medical profession is more about addiction. Because what we're talking about is not the tip of the iceberg, but only part of a bigger problem and that is addiction and it has to do with alcohol, it has to do with other illicit drugs as well as prescription medication. The county medical examiner's office sees the end results of addiction every day. 
But Dr. Lucas points out only a small proportion of people who abuse prescription drugs die. So whatever number we're seeing uh, here in this office every year, the problem is many times greater than that. That story by KPBS health reporter Kenny Goldberg. Federal authorities say prescription drug abuse is the nation's fastest growing drug problem. This is KPBS Evening Edition. I'm Jeffrey Brown. On the next News Hour, a new center explores the life and legacy of Abraham Lincoln. That's Monday, President's Day, on the PBS News Hour. The American people have named PBS the most trusted source of news and public affairs for the eighth year in a row. Trust. The American people have spoken. Thank you. Dinosaurs no longer exist, but giants still roam our blue planet. What I'm observing defies a lot right of what we have been taught. For centuries, whales and their dolphin cousins have captivated and confounded us. Now two top cameramen will travel the globe to reach across the divide and enter the realm of ocean giants. Wednesday beginning at 8, only on KPBS. Welcome back to the Public Square on KPBS Evening Edition. So much of our news tonight was about you paying more. More for water, possibly more for electricity, and more for gas. San Diego gas prices have never been this high so early in the year. We do know prices can vary depending on where you fill up in the county. Tell me how much you're paying at your local station. Take a picture of the price at the pump and send it to me. I may use some of your responses on air. Here's my email, jferian at kpbs.org. Or, of course, you can always follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And now let's go back to the news desk where Dwayne has a recap of tonight's top stories. A consumer group says we might pay several hundred dollars more a year for electricity if SDG&E gets its way. UCAN says the utility wants to retroactively impose a rate increase on customers to cover the liability costs of the 2007 wildfires. SDG&E says it just wants the ability to seek rate recovery of such costs in the future. And police in Tijuana have arrested a man wanted in the murder of his wife at San Diego City College. Armando Perez was arrested yesterday. His wife's body was found in October 2010. You can watch and comment on any of the stories you saw tonight on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. We leave you with a look at the forecast.